there's a whole lot of different things you can do to improve mitochondrial function. Some of them are just supplements. Um, one thing that's important, believe it or not, is don't eat any carbohydrates. That sounds totally crazy, right? You should completely act like you're on the Atkins diet for a couple of weeks after. Don't start just tonight if you're going to get tested tomorrow. But what happens is the mitochondria, the part that breaks down, is the part that metabolizes sugar. And so I actually had a mitochondrial failure as a result of a toxic insult. Mine was anesthesia. And that's how I fell into this whole area of medicine. Um, and so what I did was I actually cured myself by going on a ketogenic diet for a few months. And so if you deprive yourself of sugars, what would happen is that part of the mitochondria that needs to process the sugar no longer has to function. And then your body's given a chance to heal. So once you get your samples done, I'd recommend that you stop eating all carbs, at least briefly, and eat, you know, proteins, fats, and the only carbs you should have should be vegetables. Fruits have too much um, fructose, more like red sugar in them. Uh, if they're going to turn in a sample of first morning urine, it probably should be refrigerated, or it may skew. Right? Um, yeah, and I'm also not sure whether or not um, the, the lab that I use, there's like some kind of preservative in the tube, but I've also, for people who, the lab I use is kind of extensive and it doesn't accept insurance, but there's another lab, Quest Lab, which is a, a mainland thing, which if you submit your samples to Clinical Lab of Hawaii, they send it to Quest on the mainland. Those people just take the urine in a regular urine cup as if you had a urine infection and you go pee in the cup. Um, so I think that it doesn't necessarily have to be refrigerated if it's going to be turned in soon, but it won't hurt you to refrigerate it. There's not going to be, you should collect it in a clean, non-soapy glass container, not plastic and not metal. And um, you should collect your whole first morning urine, and then when they, when you bring it to the lab or wherever it is that they're putting it into the sample to be sent off, swirl the jar before you pour out the amount that they're going to actually send off for sampling. Do we have any idea where, how this is happening, what lab this is, or where we're taking our Oh, well, like, no, I had no clue. I didn't even know well, that they were going to do okay. that. Well, Medical. I just talked to Civil Defense, and he's working with Department of Health right now. I actually don't have much confidence in Department of Health will do a good job, so <laughs> I was going to ask Nina if she could suggest somebody. And if she can and they're available, I'll make sure that person is there uh, at the medical station. I'll insist that, that, that we have somebody that actually... But we can collect our sample and then bring it to them later in the day, correct? Right, but it, the earlier is the better. Now, sure, there's sure. a big problem living in Hawaii, getting samples appropriately processed and sent to the mainland in the correct way so that they don't lose all potency. When I use the more expensive private lab, they give you a FedEx thing and you overnight it to the mainland. I don't have any of those kits now. I wish I did, but we could if we send away for them. It's going to take a few well, days to get Where is your them. practice? I don't have my own practice right now. I'm only practicing at the Waimea Urgent Care. Okay. Yeah. I see Dr. Sally Boyd here in Pahoa, and mm -hmm. I actually saw her earlier today. That's another story. But I, I know she uses a lot of, you know, not clinical labs type, you know. Right. She might have. She may have some kits yeah. for urinary organic acids. Yeah. And so that would be the specific test for testing the yeah, mitochondria and damage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That and the blood lactate. Blood lactate. Yeah. Just a second, everyone. Sorry, and I will make the announcement now because I don't want to be mysterious, but uh, Dr. Kilburn passed away this week. Oh, no. So one of our leading luminaries and one of the people that's, whose hands and arms have been around the community helping us for years is no longer with us, so for what it's worth. Uh, I think it's very important at this point with the number that probably the most important thing in my opinion is, is to get as many stories as we can. And so 
I would like to solicit other people that have stories and we'll try to stay out of the discussion of what we're going to do politically and stuff and, and hold that off until we get the stories collected. Is, is that acceptable with everyone? Does that sound okay to you, Paul? Yeah, that sound's good. I, I just have one suggestion, and that is since Barb is here, for those that want to send an let's, email, I, I agree, Paul. Let's, let's give them that in case they don't get it. Barb, we need a, a place for everybody to send written or video testimony so that we can have one storage place for it. You mean by email? It can either be by email or through the website. But having me try to discuss how to do that is, is <laughs> there's things I can do, but that's way yeah. out of my strength. So, Barb, I was just thinking we could use uh, punapono at gmail.com, and in the subject, we could say the H2S exposure yeah. and, and, or X, H2S testimony. And then people put as many facts as they can, yes. and then uh, contact information on there. And if you send it to there, then we'll have a way to pull it all together yes. if you can't testify today. So it's punapono oh. at gmail.com? Yeah. Right. All one word, punapono? Yeah. 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 And, and Paul, wasn't there a link on punapono.com for the health, uh, the health form that we used to use to uh, for people to report? Yeah, I don't know what the status of that is. Know? No, I, I don't. Can I, can I make a suggestion? You may. Most videos are going to be too large to email, so right. that's a really bad idea. So I, I, Beyond so that, I am your archivist, and I'm sitting right here in the middle of you. So right. I am so, demanding so, to be recognized, okay. and yeah. I can help with this. Okay. Okay, so thanks. we also have, which has not been used at all for the last two years plus, a Facebook page called Save Poiki, Keep Puna Clean and Green. Please post things there. Please communicate there. Um, and we also have a secret pi private group on Facebook, um, which you need to know one of us to get into, but almost everybody in here is in it. So let's use that too, because I also learned about the blowout on Facebook. And then I checked Twitter. So, and it still worked for a lot of people, but a lot of people can record a video on their phone and upload it directly to Facebook. Mm -hmm. And then you get over the email problem and the technical <coughs> problem and people not knowing how to do that and then download them and archive them somewhere. Who just so let's want to send an email. I'm not saying send a video. I'm saying send an email with your contact information and, and, and the salient facts and details. And if you send it to Barb, then at least we have it all in one place and we can follow up. And, and, Barb and if you want to do in the meantime, why don't we finish right? the testimonies that right. are here? And, and because we got a lot of things to go on, so we should probably try to... Okay, is there anybody that doesn't know one way to, to do the archives? I've heard two, which is one is to post the videos on uh, Safe Pohiki, Keep Them Clean and Green. And the second is you can email anything that's emailable. No, no, clarify. <laughs> you have to post them in the secret group. You can, you can, because you're an admin on it, and you're an admin, and you're an admin, but I'm and Kat are the only ones that actually post there. But there is a secret group that you can upload videos well, to. Well, that, that won't help us. We need a place where we... Yeah. we yes, it will help you. That is the same thing. I'm just Excuse redirecting me. you from the public okay, page me, but we, to the we private want, group. Puna Pono Alliance wants this stuff. We want to gather it ourselves. You can post it anywhere you want, but please make sure you get it to us, please. To me, personally. And they won't check there, so never mind. Okay. I, 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 I think you Barb, know what I'm talking about, right? Barb, yeah. I, work with Carrie and, and get me some succinct guidance that even a person like me can understand <laughs> who's a social media <laughs> midget. And so I know how to get that video. And, well, I, and I think um, the two things are, if you can do it by email, just see that to um, punapono at gmail.com. And then the second thing is that you can do it by email. How about people that do videos? And Okay, you so we you, want the video. you work with Carrie and come up with simple directions so everybody can do it. I have three terabytes of video for you that I've been trying to give you for two years, so I'm happy to hand that well, over. Not, I want the video of what happened to these people here. You're not being in charge of it. Yeah. yeah, okay, uh, we, we have plenty yeah. of time. If they upload the video to like YouTube and send the email, the link to, to, uh, to uh, put yeah. a photo, that, just, that yeah, that's fine. Way. We right. just need to collect it. Right. 
that, that's another way. You can upload it to YouTube, send a link to um, to put a phone off. That's Gmail. fine. That's fine. That's I just want to make sure that we have it. That's great, Steve. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mike. Thank you. Who's next? I guess I'll go. <laughs> and your name? Um, my name is Sophia. Last name is Wilt. I live on Makamai Street within the one mile radius. And um, I was in my home, and I remember the power went out sometime between three and four. And I remember hearing that jet engine through the forest sound early on, very, very early on, well before dark, for off and on for hours. Um, uh, obviously, we lost power, and as the evening progressed, I remember starting to, to really not feel very well and not understanding why. Um, and not really thinking too much about it. I was um, sent a message on Facebook that there was a, a gas leak and that's and it was dark and that's when things started to get really creepy. Um, and I called the police department immediately um, and they gave me little information, uh, fire department same, civil defense same. Basically, if you're uncomfortable, you should go. And I thought, where, where am I gonna go? I can't even probably get down out my street. So I. I was really, 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 really freaked out. I was by myself, I had my renter in, in the Ohana, and I went and notified him. He also was having respiratory symptoms, eye redness, not feeling well, um, and like so many other people, had no cell phone service, no power, no radio, no nothing, and had no means of being contacted. Um, uh, I don't remember when, but shortly thereafter, uh, on Facebook, I noticed that uh, the leak had been contained. However, I continued to hear that sound, that creepy jumbo jet through the jungle sound, off and on for a while. And then, and then I passed out. I was laying, and I am, I am a terrible sleeper. I have chronic insomnia. Um, and there was a hurricane hitting, and I wanted to be awake in case there were any damages in my house. And I was laying on my sofa, and I just, just passed out for hours. Were you there? No. No, I was by myself. I am, and I, yeah. So, um, so I passed out for hours. I woke up, and I, I was actually, it was like out of it. I mean, I knew things were bad, and I just like fumbled into my bedroom and passed out for probably six or seven more hours. I woke up in the morning and felt like crap. Um, like, you know, like I had been partying, you know, for days and days, which I had not been. Um, and, um, and I felt, really uncomfortable being not only at my house but also in that zone and I've been as trying to spend as little time there as possible because I'm so uncomfortable um, you and I recently connected and you recommended it that I go to my doctor which I did today and um, I had been in to see her a week prior uh, for just a regular kind of routine, helping me with something, and, and I was doing great, and I looked amazing, and I felt really strong, and I walked in, and she went, oh my god, you look like shit. And I said, yeah, I really, I've been like puffy and red, and my throat hurts, and I've been like brain foggy, and she um, did some um, listening with the stethoscope into my chest, and she found a patch of fluid and mucus and she gave me a bunch of recommendations for um, things to do, but she said, she said she was really, really, really concerned considering what good health she had just seen me in a week ago and how I, how I look and feel now. Yeah, that's mostly it. And also, for whatever it's worth, I had applied for the relocation program and they told me there was no money and that they couldn't help me. And you better bet I'm gonna follow up and get on their asses. Well, I know Michael has, and, and Danny Steiner passed out. He's on the list. You know, all, a lot of the people that were most affected have been on that list. They spent the money for toilets and bus stops and stuff like that. Yeah. I got approved. They, they offered me 80000 less than what I owe. Yeah. I, I ended up, I just for, I was on that list years ago, and I ended up selling my house for 75000 I had two twenty five in it because I just wanted out, and I got tired of it. Is anybody is there anybody talking about doing something, some sort of civil suit, taking action that way? I mean, you know, all going through all these. Uh, yeah, I well, we should talk. Yeah, an injunction of some sort. I mean, I'm, uh, I, I'm not sure. But get a good attorney because that's what they do. But this is this is bullshit. Excuse my language. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sue everybody. Yeah. You have two years. We're gonna. You know, it's. It, 
you should get your ducks in an order, you know, get all your information. That's what we're doing. We need to have as much documentation, yeah. and, you know, because you're going to need all that for Every, that Everything we do administratively uh, makes it more powerful sure. when we decide to go that direction. But I have to say, I have to say frankly that uh, uh, this event is a uh, Bit of a game changer for me. I'm, mm -hmm. I, I'm, yeah, me too. Me too. It, it, yeah, I definitely was always kind of like, well, they're they're you know they're not transparent, they're not accountable, but things have not been that bad. When I was trapped in my house and I couldn't leave, and I I could feel I was like, well, the, the it's thing terrible. the thing that is a game changer for me is all of this <laughs> is unnecessary because the mm -hmm. plant should have been shut down. Sure. And, and the fact that it wasn't shut down, and why not? Well, they're like negative. I say, it's negative. I don't know sure. if it's incompetence or anything. Even if it wasn't shut down, where was the backup plan? Hmm? I mean, we live in an area that, that only within the last 10 years has power. So where's the backup plan? Well, the power well, well, it, it, you're, making, it, you're making an assumption that the power that we use comes from the geothermal plant. But well, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, is in an emergency situation, every hospital in the world has, well, not the world, has a backup. Right. That's not, every day. And you're asking, saying, what is the county's backup plan? Why, yeah, why is it, well, why doesn't PGV have... <laughs> Because well, it isn't PGV in this case. It, it's Helco that needs the backup. Well, no, for the monitoring, it's PGV. And oh, yeah. I'm saying, sure. I'm saying, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. There, there's a somebody. Well, let's, well let's, let's, I thought we were doing stories. And yeah, I let's let's yeah, do yeah, story yeah. because yeah. the answer to the question is is there's been great resistance to come up with a community emergency response plan for PGV for mm -hmm. about. 20 years. And uh, the fact that, I mean, they've been, they've known for 20 years they need backup power for those monitors. And the civil defense called them up and asked them why they don't have any monitors. And they tell, they tell the head of civil defense, we don't have a generator. You know, here's a multi-million dollar yeah, corporation. They oh said they could gosh. not. And civil defense said, well, I'll loan you a generator <laughs> if you'll start your monitors. And they still haven't started the monitors. <laughs> okay. Oh and more God. stories. Yes, sir. Oh. My name is George Duvris, D-O-U-V-R-I-S, <clears throat> along with my wife, my daughter, my son, his wife, and two visitors from New Zealand. Uh, we were in our house, which is about a mile from Geothermal on what's called officially Government Road. Um, we had no phone or internet access to know that anything specific was going on at Geothermal. Uh, we heard what sounded like this horrendous aircraft noise, maybe around 7, 8 o'clock, I'm not sure. Um, and without having any kind of idea of anything, with, again, with geothermal, we all started feeling nauseous, smelling some kind of acrid gas. Uh, I got very lethargic from being very in tune to staying up for the hurricane. I was just very sleepy. All of us, I think, were experiencing a very tired headache, kind of symptoms similar to what I've heard other people experience, but we acknowledged it before we had heard any of these stories. Um, right when I thought I'd be in peak form to help with the hurricane because we were worried about our windows breaking or the roof coming off, I told my wife Stephanie that I had to go to bed. For some reason I was just feeling I had to sleep. What time were you talking about? Uh, probably around midnight, a little bit after, maybe mm -hmm. say 12.30, closer to 1 a.m. Uh, we were in, anticipating another kick from the hurricane, but I said, you better handle it, honey, I can't do it. I got let me rest for about 10 minutes. I woke up the next morning, still Everybody. feeling tired. Uh, everybody was complaining about headaches. Uh, uh, sore throat problems. She still has a sore throat. Lethargic, no energy. We're all lethargic, we're all having this brain fog. Um, another concern I've got is, starting from that morning, I've got these prickly feelings all through my abdomen feel like little nerve pains. I didn't I don't know what they are. I don't know if I can associate them with what happened, but this is not like me and I am concerned what this is. I like to go check this out. So um, that's my story. I represent seven people. They can make their own testimony if they like. Um, um, but so I can say I'm still ready to go to sleep. I feel like I'm ready to fall asleep anytime. 
My name's Nicolette Duber, and I second what he said, all that's true. Sore throats, hard to swallow. And I spent one night away, and it got better. When I came back the next day, it started up again. So And we couldn't get out of our driveway either. I'm Stephanie Duper, my family. Um, we were the same way. I, I managed to stay up because, you know, I was, you know, too just too nervous, but everybody else went to sleep, they were just totally out. They couldn't wake them up, you know, when it started really coming at about 2 o'clock. And um, I just stayed up all night. But the next day I said, okay, you guys take over. It was like 6 o'clock and I kind of got them up and I went. I slept until about 2 o'clock. And I, I was just out, you know, after that. And we did hear the sounds. And it was kind of amazing because we didn't have internet reception or telephone. And out of the, um, our, daughter in law's uh, cell phone, she got a text message from someone out in um, Kalapana saying, you got to evacuate the, you know, and it just kind of came in. It was the only message we ever got <laughs> to, to get out. And we said, we can't. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. No way to get out of the road. We couldn't even get out of our driveway. It took us two days to get out. And I said, I'm not going to go anywhere because I heard those trees going sound like firecrackers. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you all heard it. <laughs> so, you know, we live about a mile and a half or so up on the ridge. And, you know, so we could see everything down below and hear everything. <clears throat> and I know we, we spoke yesterday when we just kind of took a walk around to see what was happening. And another gentleman, he heard it. He tried to evacuate his family in Leilani. in Leilani on that first street coming up. He had his cars ready, he had his family ready to go, and, and, all and they were all passed out, and they couldn't even get out. What were their names? Um, that I never met, but I know where they live. I can go back and tell yeah, them to come yeah. to this meeting and maybe tell their neighbors, because he said he's like right where the slope goes down there, you know, before it comes up to lay on uh, for that road. Mm -hmm. And he heard it, he heard it go off, and he was ready and prepared. But when he got in his cars and ready to go, the trees had already fallen down. <laughs> Get out, so he had to stay in his house. So I'm not sure if that was that. But there's no way of getting out. We're all stuck. <laughs> is, is, is there anybody who's uh, given testimony so far that would uh, be uh, reticent to having it uh, used by other people? What? Used by other people? Used by other people. If, if, if this is posted on Facebook. Just a second, this is Daryl. <laughs> Hello, Daryl. <laughs> nice tune. <laughs> I know somebody who used nice that tune for his ex wife. <laughs> After your yeah, testimony, I, I think I need to it's amend it's mine. Right I was here. able to stay up at one o'clock and I tr the crash. I think what he's asking is is everybody's public yeah. with their story, right? Yeah. 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 I've been out of it for yeah. about two days. Yeah, tired. Yeah. And I'm not sure. Oh. I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> We'll edit that together for you. So guys, while we're, while we're waiting, is there someone else that would like to give their testimony so we can continue to move forward? Yeah, please. Uh, my name is Megan Funk. Uh, Mike is my boyfriend. We live together on Hope the Street. And so it was like 7.30, maybe a little bit before, and we were just kind of hanging out waiting for the storm, kind of excited but anxious at the same time. And so, all of a sudden, we just hear this like jet engine noise, and we're like, I thought it was the storm. I was like, whoa, like, because I'd never been in a hurricane before, and I was like, wow, that's pretty intense, like, what's gonna happen? But then we go and look out, the, we open the door and look out the